Hello everyone, I am Murloc Joe and welcome to an episode of Space Engineers Basics. In this episode we'll take a quick look at what an automated printer is and why you should have one and how to make them. Uh, an automated printer is something completely vanilla, there's no mods or scripts needed for it. Uh, it's a combination of pistons, welders and a projector. Uh, it's set up in a way that it builds ships and rovers for you, with as little player interaction or monitoring as possible. Hence the automated part of the name. Uh, it's They're most efficient at and most commonly used for building small grid ships uh, or rovers. But as you see in this clip um, behind us here, they can also be used for building uh, larger ships. I wouldn't recommend adding too many pistons or subgrids to your printer though because it will, as with all subgrids, they will become unstable and you'll end up invoking the wrath of uh, server admins if you do this in multiplayer or worse, uh, Clang himself. Now, what are the um, advantages to uh, having a printer? Why do we want to build a ship with as little interaction as possible? Uh, why don't we just keep on building them uh, the good old fashioned way, yeah, with our welding ship or with our hand welder? Because that's what Space Engineers is all about, isn't it? <laughs> hand welding stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> the uh, big benefit to having an auto the printer is time. It saves you time. Like this printer here, uh, this one is sped up a bit since I'm in Kuwait right now. But if I use this one on a live server, it will build a fighter for me, equal to the one projected there and standing next to it, in 12 minutes. Now, 12 minutes to build a small grid ship is not good time, but when we look at how much time I as a player have to use on it, it's quite good because all I have to do is turn on the projection, turn on the welders, and reverse the pistons. Now, these pistons are moving quicker because it's creative again. I just want to show you this, how it's done. Uh, in survival, it will be a bit slower. But that right there was all the interaction I had to do. Uh, the only thing I had to do was click start. And in survival, this would take 12 minutes. That's 12 minutes where I'm free to do whatever I want, and the ship would still build itself without me having to do anything else to have it built. I could go uh, exploring the map, for instance. I could go mining. I could make some new friends. I could dance, or I could build several ships at once. Who knows? Or, you know, real life stuff as well. So now we've been through what the printer is why we should have one and the next natural step would be how do we make one now the first thing we need is a blueprint of the thing we want to build we'll use this rover for the sake of this video i'm going to be a bit clever here and i'll put i'll make a uh, production version of it with like one block here I'll show you why later on. And then blueprint it. And scout two. And we then get to building uh, the printer. Now, like we said at the beginning of the video, a printer is a combination of pistons, welders, and a projector. So we'll build a new printer onto this existing grid. First off, we'll take a piston. Then we'll add others. I think two welders should be more than enough for this. Put them in a the group named uh, Welders Buggy just so I know how to find them later on. Let me stretch this out a bit. 
and there's a million ways you could do this next part. It's pretty much setting up the projector. Uh, I like to use a uh, rotor and then I subgrid the small grid projector onto this. Uh, the way I do that is that I uh, grind down the existing rotor head. Then go to the control panel, find the rotor. I click add small rotor head. I'm also going to lock it so it doesn't uh, start twisting. Next up, I add a few small blocks just to make sure the projection will be sticking out of the edge. I add the projector. I'm add a small control panel here as well. We easily find the projector. Projector. Buggy. Um, then we'll set it up. First step, aligning the uh, projection. This is the part where you'll see why I have the um, pink block on the back. If you're wondering how I can see through this, it's in the settings. You can add transparency to your menus. I find it very handy for when I adjust my projections like this. It doesn't mean adjusting them are <laughs> any easier. <laughs> they always tend to twist the wrong way. There we go. go. Up and one to the side. Like that. It's connected. Then we'll uh, find out how far the pistons have to go. Oh, and we'll add key projection. So you don't need to align it every time. Pistons. Piston buggy. I don't think this is the full distance. So we'll extend it a bit, like seven meters. I don't think this is any longer. Or I don't think it's any shorter than seven. So we don't run into any risk of these pistons bumping into our grid here. Yeah, we can actually make it 8 meters, I think. Each log grid block is 2 meters, so if you wanted, if we wanted, we could just go ahead and count them. Exactly 10 meters. Uh, I guess I should have counted next time, next video. 10 meters. It does not need to subtract all the way though, since it's such a small grid, I can make it 5 meters. Uh, the general rule of thumb is that you can have it move at 0 0.02 meters per second when you're building small grids in light armor. That means with one piston you can set it at 0 0.02. And if you had several pistons, like the other one got two pistons, yeah. It doesn't show here, but it would be 0 0.01. Here I have it going 10 times quicker because it's uh, creative. That's that. Then we'll add a control station. And we'll set it up. We got Buggy welders, buggy projector, and buggy pistons reverse. Before we start this, some of you might wonder why do I have this space in between? Uh, the reason for it is that if I do this, first off, I'll be blocking some of my projection. Secondly, uh, the welders and the piston head will be rubbing against them as it's going back and forward, and that can cause physics uh, glitches, which quickly will invoke the, uh, well, as well as to having too many pistons and subgrids, it will invoke the wrath of Clang and Sir Admins. So we play it safe and we keep, uh, keep a gap in between. It's always better to have too much space between your printer and everything else than to have too little. Uh, on to the production. Production is already on. Turn on the welders. 
and we reverse the piston. Now this is more like the uh, actual survival speeds of a piston, how slow it's going. For the sake of the video, uh, we will increase it a bit. 0.2 and you'll see it build. Given how this is such a tiny grid you can probably go a lot quicker than 0.2 at this one as well but the nice rule of thumb is always 0.2. Looks like the welder blocked one wheel it was building that's okay. We just select the wheels and add wheel boom bug is built and this is why we had this block. Now our buddy Davia, who doesn't know how to use this one, he knows that all he has to do is grind down this one. And he's got himself a working buggy. Being a good guy, we turn off the projection, we turn off the welders and we reverse the pistons so that the printer is ready for the next one. There we go. Whoa. Brand new buggy for us to crash. I mean, for David to crash. It was totally not us crashing the last one. Um, I think that pretty much covers the basics on printers. There are, of course, several different variations in how to do them. You can use a lot more rotors and hinges than I do. I prefer to keep them mostly for small grid ships uh, like this. Of course, you can always speed up the production of some things. If you have a small grid that has some part where your welders can't get to, you could always add like a small welder down here or something. And that will help assist. You can make it more vulnerable, so you can have them taller. There's a lot of uh, varieties to it you can do. I don't know if you guys have an experience building welders. Do you have one you're proud of? What are the pros and cons of welders for you? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, uh, if you feel this video is missing something or there's something special, some special topic, um, some special topic you would like me to cover next, feel free to add that in the comment section below as well, and I'll do my best to get to it. Until then. I've been Mel of Joe with a Space Engineers basic video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.